Hi everyone, I'm Miriam with Easily Essential and thank you so much for joining me for this 12 um, Hacks for Horses and Essential Oils. Thank you so much for joining me for this workshop about how to use essential oils with your horses. Um, I'm here to show you exactly, you know, great easy ways that you can start incorporating essential oils into your horse routine. So I'm just gonna give it a couple seconds and let everybody join and jump online and then we'll get started. Hi guys, I see you watching. I'm just giving everyone a chance to jump on. Hi everyone, I see everyone watching. I'm just giving you guys a chance to jump on. Hi Ken, thank you for commenting. I didn't realize I could see the comments on here. I was trying to see if I could see them on my computer. Okay, great, so we've got a bunch of people online. So let's get started. Um, here today, this is the essential oils for, um, so this is the essential oils workshop for equestrians and their horses and easy ways you can start incorporating essential oils into your daily barn routine. So thank you all for joining me and let's just get started right away. We're going to be doing some fun stuff. It's not going to just be like a lecture type workshop. Uh, I will show you how to make a bunch of really cool things that are useful things that you're probably using every day that you didn't know that you can make yourself in like two minutes. Um, so today we're going to learn how to help our horses relax, how to help your horse with, if you have a horse with sensitive skin or skin funk, um, how to support their digestive system. So how many people, type yes, how many people know a horse with a sensitive digestive system? You know, how many people worry about their horse's digestive system, whether they're, you know, eating properly or drinking properly? Type yes. I see lots of thumbs ups right now. Good. So, I mean, I, I think we all know horses like that. How many people know a horse with sensitive skin? Yes, Erin. Uh, how many people know a horse with sensitive skin or maybe skin funk or funky legs, you know? And um, horses that need support in breathing. If you have a high performance horse, maybe like an eventer or a barrel horse or a rainer, even, you know, all horses. My horse, I'm in Southern California. He's not a super high performance horse. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a barrel racer. Um, total respect for them. Uh, I'm just not, <laughs> I'm not, as, I'm not ballsy enough. And, um, but we have fires here in Southern California where we've had to evacuate him before. And, um, with all the ash in the air, you know, we need that breathing support. So, how many people want to support the horse's breathing and just total support, immune support, how you want to support your horse's immune system, muscles, joints, tendons. We're going to talk about it all from, so from literally their head, their pole to their feet, we'll talk about supporting your entire horse. Um, so let's get started. Um, before I get started, you see all these oils behind me. This is, this is a collection that's been going on for years, you guys. Um, nobody's expected to have that many oils. We're just going to talk about a few basic oils, the ones that I got started using, the ones that I use still in everyday use. You know, a lot of those ones up on the shelf, they don't get, they don't come down all the time. Um, so, there's a huge difference in essential oil quality. So one thing that is really important is when I'm talking, because I will talk about internal use of oils today, I'm talking about 100% pure essential oils, like the plant, whatever's on the bottle is in the bottle. So unfortunately, there's not really a regulating body for what how essential oils are labeled in this country. So they only have to contain 10% of an essential oil to be labeled as pure. So the rest of it can be total junk. So here at the Horseaholic, um, I'm really picky about what we promote, what we, um, yeah, what we promote and what I put in my horse's body, in my own body, I use these oils on my daughter, my four-year-old daughter who's super sensitive. So um, make sure when you're picking essential oils that you go with a company that owns their own farms, that you can visit their farms and see it that they're not using any pesticides at all. You don't want that in your body when you're, especially if you're ingesting these oils or even on your body, you know, you don't want the skin reactions from whatever is in that. Um, so the company that we use 
it goes above and beyond FDA standards, organic standards. Organic standards, I think you, the dirt has to be pesticide free for seven years. Ours is 50 years because we don't want any of that Roundup or anything in the dirt. Um, instead of distilling the oils in aluminum drums where aluminum leaches into the oils and can go into your product and it affects your neurological health and your horse's neurological health, that aluminum, you can just Google it. We do our distillation in medical grade stainless steel drums. That's really, really important. Um, our oils are slow steam, low heat distilled. So that means that it's done, it takes a lot longer than the way that most oils are distilled, but they're, if they're distilled, Stilled at higher heats or not not properly, it's going to destroy a lot of the therapeutic qualities of that oil. And we want to maintain the therapeutic properties of the oil. And we want those molecules that help us so much to stay alive, right? So th they're going to go into your, the oils are going to go into your bloodstream, your horse's bloodstream, into your cells. Um, they're going to help clean out your cells and your horse's cells. They're going to help clean out your organs. And they're just going to help your body and your animal's body, your horse, your dogs, be healthier. So um, one of the things that we do at, with the company that we use is the, the oils are tested. So the dirt is tested. The water is tested before anything happens. But every single step of the process is tested. The plants are tested. Then um, it's tested during distillation many times after after it's bottled, it's tested again. And then, this is the really cool part, after we've done all of our in-house testing, it's sent to a third-party independent lab. It's the same lab that the FBI and Scotland Yard uses for additional tests. They're checking for things like mold, bacteria, all those kinds of things that could be in the dirt or the plants that we don't want in our products, okay? So it's like a multi-million dollar lab. These oils, um, I'm super anal because my four-year-old daughter, that's actually how I got into this, and my really sensitive horse that was just constantly itchy, um, and I really wanted to make sure that the products that I was using um, were products that I felt safe using, and then especially when I started helping other people, I was so glad that I picked um, oils that were safe. So today we'll talk about how to support your horse. It's total support. So like I said, they go into your cells, they'll go into your horse's cells. So skin, digestion, hormones, who has a moody mare? Say yes if you know any moody mares. Um, respiratory, like I said, circulatory, immune system, um, stress and relaxation. So have you ever had a horse that, you know, had a stressful time in the trailer? We'll talk about trailering and things that you can do. Yes, I see some yeses there. Awesome. Um, muscles, joints, tendons. Yes. Hi, Erin. Hi, Kelly. Um, so the main thing is we'll talk about how to use all these things. You're not going to retain all of the information I say today, and that is okay. Because when you get started, we have education groups that have all the education and the recipes in there and all the support that you need. My biggest advice is if you do start using the oils, keep them out. Keep them in a bag. Don't just like put them in the corner. Keep them out. Use them often and early on your horse. Use them so that you can keep your body healthy and their body healthy. So, so totally, you're totally supporting your health, okay? Don't wait till something goes wrong. So the first thing that we'll talk about is skin support. Okay, so do you guys want to see me make stuff or do you just want me to tell you how to do it? I'll wait for a second. Okay, I think I see some yeses. Yes, I see some yeses. So I will show you how to make a few things. So I've been seeing these, this, um, I've been seeing, uh, uh, you guys, I see a ton of great specific comments. There's a lot of specific comments. You guys can email me or in our education groups after you get started. There's tons of information for specific issues, okay? So, coat. So, who has a horse with an icky coat or gets sweaty, like funky? Um, there's some great coat powders that are on the market that I think are like $30 or $28. Yep, I see make it please. I will make it for you. So I will show you how simple it is to make your coat powder for under $5. I have, because it's so powdery, I didn't want to like get it all over myself in the video. So I pre-mixed together arrowroot powder, 
Bet Night Clay and baking soda. All really simple ingredients. You can get them, you know, at at Costco. You can get them on Amazon. And then um, I have a horse with a sensitive skin. So two oils that I love for skin, for sensitivities, are lavender and frankincense. Okay, these are amazing skin oils. These are what I put in my own face skin thing because I want to stay, you know, have glowing, youthful skin. So I use that for this. My daughter has really itchy skin. Frankincense and lavender, I use it on her. My, these are two oils that I had the first success with my horse on. She was one of those horses that was rubbing her tail out, rubbing her, I mean, she would just rub it on the stall walls, her whole body, you know, patches of hair would be missing. And um, I started making actually a spray. And um, I can show you how to make a spray too. And, um, and then I started doing powders because powders are really nice and I even do this for my daughter. So my daughter gets really itchy in her, like inside of her elbows, anywhere that sweats, her neck but behind her knees. So I make her a slightly different recipe than this, but it's in our education groups. And um, it really, really helps support the skin and support all those, uh, all those icky things. So this is a great powder to put under your horse's boots sweaty areas. It's a great dry shampoo. You can use it in your own hair too. Um, so here we go. So I combined those three ingredients, right? And this is how easy it is. Ooh, you guys, I grabbed the wrong one. I grabbed, um, grabbed thieves. So frankincense, right? <clears throat> so, oh, these, this is going to be a topical use. So oils can be used topically, aromatically, like in that diffuser right there or internally for the Vitality Oils, because the Vitality Oils are FDA approved, okay? So, one, two, three. So I just put some drops of frankincense. Oh, you couldn't even see it. Okay, hold on. I'll hold it up, you guys, Barbara and Kelly. Normally I would do this in a bowl, and mix it together, but I did it in a Ziploc today because I knew that I would be on camera and I needed an easy way to get it. So now I'm just mixing it up. I don't know if you can see, there's like a cloud of powder. This Ziploc must have a hole in it. Okay, and then look what I have. This is, I literally peeled the label off. This is an old spice jar of onion powder. And I'm just going to, Put it in. I'm not going to totally fill it up because my desk is already messy enough. What is the powder? The powder is arrowroot, baking soda, and betonite clay. And there you go. So you just I, saddle area under your horse's boots, anywhere that gets sweaty. Um, use it as a dry shampoo. It's a really good coat defending powder, skin defending powder. Think of this as a defense, okay? Um, and the recipes are in our education groups. Um, the actual recipes. You get to watch me do it, but the actual like um, measurements, because I don't do measurements when I make them all the time because I'm so used to it, are in the education groups. So another way that you can... Um, Another way that you can use oils is in a, in, in like a, um, just diluted in a carrier oil. Okay. So if my horse has like one little spot that's a little sensitive and they need a sensitive skin, um, a sensitive skin soothing oil, I would mix my frankincense and my lavender and either this is a squeeze bottle or you can use a glass bottle with a dropper on it. This is my preference actually, but at the barn I like to be safe with um, plastics um, sometimes. So, and then you would just top it off with carrier oil and you could use something like, this is literally my kitchen olive oil. And, um, and then you could do that. Uh, the lavender and we'll talk about peppermint are great for summer annoyances, you guys. I just saw a question in here. Great for summer annoyances. So any kind of like buzzing things that wanna, or anything that just annoys your horse that wants to, you know, land on it and bug it. Um, I love to make a spray out of lavender and peppermint, okay? So those are great ways. Um, you could do an oil. 
you could dilute it down, you could do it in a spray, you could do it in a powder, whichever way you want. I have powder all over my desk now. Um, okay, so let's do a muscle. Let me see. You know what? Do you guys want to see me make a spray? I'll do a lavender peppermint spray. So this is how I would make my spray. This is an empty bottle. And I want to use something that's going to help the oil, the essential oil mix in with the water, right? Because we all know oil and water just kind of sits on the top. So um, for a really sensitive horse, I love either alcohol-free witch hazel or um, just pure aloe vera gel, okay? And I actually use the same spray on my daughter. So, um, so I'm going to go with the aloe. So... You just put some aloe in there. And again, the recipes are in our education groups. And then you would make it with, I'm going to do peppermint because somebody asked about summer annoyances. So I just added that right into the aloe. Hi, Michelle. And then I'll do lavender too, okay? And you guys can look for all the safety information and everything. If you if you want all that information, I'm not going to have uh, all the time in the world to go over it right now, but go to easilyessential.com forward slash safety for all the safety information of using the oils. So I have my oils and my aloe and say I had a horse with skin funk. Say they had like icky skin funk. I would actually use this. This is a package of Thieves a household cleaner, which I love. I use it on every surface of my own home. It's basically the only cleaner I ever have to use. And it's great also in horse products, any kind of funk or hoof funk or anything. So instead of using the aloe for funky skin, I would have put the thieves in um, with, with oils and made a spray that way if I had a skin funk. But this is for sensitive skin, right? So I did aloe. And then you just top it off with your distilled water. And you have your spray and it's an awesome, it smells so good already. Oh my gosh, lavender and peppermint, you guys, if you have like seasonal clogged up stuff with all the pollen going on, stick lavender, peppermint and lavender right in that diffuser and you will love it, okay? So, and these are all human, I mean, like I said, they're pure grade, right? So you can use them too. So that's a spray, that's how we make a spray. It takes what, a minute, two minutes um, to make that. Okay, so. My desk is gonna get messy, you guys. Just bear with me. <laughs> so let's talk about muscles. So who has a horse? Um, just say yes if you have a horse that you know needs muscular support. Maybe you show your horse, or your horse, um, you do some heavy trail riding or, or endurance riding, or maybe they're just getting older and they need muscle and joint and tendon and all that kind of support. Say yes for that, if you wanna see me make anything for that. Okay, well, yes. Okay, good. I see some yeses coming through. Okay, I'm going to show you a really easy way. This is such a great way to do cooling. Um, I love this um, after a hard workout. So peppermint is a really awesome oil for, so now I just did lavender and frankincense. I'm going to do peppermint and pan away. This, these are my like awesome muscle oils, muscle joint tendon, circulation, great stuff for supporting your horse. So if your horse is really hot, say it's in the middle of the summer, just take some peppermint, put it in an Epsom salt, put it in the salt first, right? Because we want it to bind to the salt so that it then distributes in the water and sponge it over your horse. It's a great cooling wash. It will help them, their bodies, it will help support their body while they regulate their temperature coming down. Um, for great muscles, so peppermint is awesome for muscles. Peppermint is actually great for digestion too, you guys. Great for digestion. Um, and then pan away. Pan away is kind of like what it sounds. It's really, it, say like I wake up and my neck is stiff or, or I go for a really hard ride and I'm not used to it. Or, you know, maybe I fell down and just bumped my hip wrong. Pan away is one of my best friends. So I use this um, 
after my rides a lot for my horse and myself. So you could again put pan away and, and peppermint in there. You can also make a rub. Um, just put it in one of these dropper bottles or just get a, 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 a bottle and put it in there and mix it with some carrier oil. So you guys, when you're using these oils, um, this one is going to be labeled actually for internal use. That's because the FDA requires that it's only, if it's going to be labeled for internal use, it cannot be labeled for regular use. So this is our Vitality Collection. It also comes in a regular oil. They're the exact same thing in the bottle. Um, now this is going to be labeled for just regular use because you see how it's blue around it? It's like a solid color. The Vitality ones are always going to have white around them. So when you want to know dilution of an oil, read the bottle and it will tell you how to dilute it. And the same dilution for horses is the same dilution for people. So it's the same adult dilution for horses too. The only thing I will say for people with really sensitive skin, which I happen to be one of those people and my horse happens to be one of those horses, diluted at 50% more than what the label says when you're first starting. Just because these oils, a little tiny bit goes a long way. There's like 70 or 80, I think 80 drops in a bottle of this oil. A little goes a really long way and diluting it is awesome. So, um, so for muscles, I'll even just make a rub and um, in some carrier oil, almond oil and, and fractionated coconut oil are my favorites. And um, I'll rub their muscles with it. Do you guys wanna see me make a rub? Do you wanna see how I do it? Yes, I see some thumbs up. Okay, good. Okay, I'll show you guys how to make a rub. Um, I'm gonna do it in a squeeze bottle. Some people only use glass bottles because um, essential oils, they're very powerful for plastics and especially with lemon. I don't put lemon in a glass bottle because lemon um, actually can digest petrochemicals, which is awesome when you're taking it internally because you don't want petrochemicals inside of you. But because of that, it's not good in plastic. Um, can you put the rub in a spray bottle? Um, if the rub is going to have oil a lot, it's going to be all oil because it's going to be carrier oil with essential oils. So I wouldn't put it in a spray bottle because it's going to be hard to spray it out. I would put it in a dropper like this or what you can do is if you want to make a spray that's like the rub, you can do just like I did with the uh, skin soothing spray or this is one of my favorite sprays, muscle sprays. Take some Epsom salt, put it in the spray bottle, okay? Epsom salt is really great for supporting your muscles and put it in the spray bottle and then add whatever oil so i would do panaway and peppermint to it and, and you can get the recipes in the education groups and then put water in it and shake it up and then you've got a great muscle spray so that would be an awesome muscle spray um another way you can support muscles so you know what i'm not going to make um an oil with it because it's really basic um i'm going to make who uses poultice on their horses? Does anybody use poultice? Like after a hard workout, just like rub clay over your horse. I'm gonna make a clay for horses that you can easily, easily make that's gonna support all of their, you know, muscles, joints, tendons, all of that stuff, okay? Yes, okay, good, okay. So I'm gonna make it in a small little container though because I'm actually gonna use this on myself because I'm at home right now. I have a big tub at the barn for my horse. He's, he's all taken care of. Yes, you, you can. Mm -hmm. You can wrap the horse. Okay, so same thing with this. This is a great, this clay mix that I'm going to make is going to be a great thing that you can wrap your horse afterwards. I use um, paper bags, like wet paper bags, and then wrap them after. So I'm just going to take some clay, right? And you can get our supply list in our education groups too. They're really easy to find. Um, so some clay and then I'm just going to do, I'll do peppermint. Okay. And then I'm just going to do peppermint. Maybe I'll do pan away too. No, I'm just going to do peppermint. And then you just add the water to it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I totally forgot a spoon. So I'm going to make a big sacrifice and sacrifice this Hawaii pen so I can show you how I mix it together. 
and the consistency. So all you do, and the recipes, like the exact recipes are in the groups, but this is what I do. I just keep adding water until it's the consistency that I like my clay to wrap my horse's legs, okay? And there's a whole video on how to do it and wrap the legs and everything in those education groups. So I put too much water, it's like soupy. So I'll just get a little more clay and they think I'll be perfect. Yeah, I'm perfect. Okay, so that's how you make clay, okay? And I just used peppermint in it because I, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this on myself yet. Um, and I might actually use it for my face <laughs> because it's really good for your face too. And that's why I didn't want to put pan away because I don't, my face isn't like feeling, you know, there's no like tension in my face right now. I guess if I had a, maybe a head tension, I could do it, but, um, the, that will be really good for my face. Um, okay. So that's how you would make a poultice. It's really simple, right? Um, then, okay, so we talked about digestion. The, our horse's digestive systems are super, super sensitive. So this is my tummy defender. It's really easy. I just take this oil called Digize. It's a vitality. So um, we'll talk about using it internally in a second, but this is one of the ways you can use it topically. And I'll either um, just drop a little carrier oil in my hand like just like a little dime size and one or two drops and rub my hands together and rub it on my horse's abdomen or I'll have it pre-diluted for myself like you can even see that says digest plus olive um, and I'll put it on my hands and rub my horse's tummy it's a great great oil so I've had about two weeks ago I was at the barn and there was a horse um, there was a horse that wasn't eating or drinking properly and her owner wasn't was really feeling uncomfortable about it And I got there and I literally got there just to drop off my horse's supplements and his oils And I had a brand new bottle of digest to drop off and um, This this woman was not she was uncomfortable about the way that her horse was acting And so I said I have this digest. Do you want to use it? And she said yes so she started rubbing it on her horse's abdomen and literally like less than 30 seconds later, like almost so quickly, that horse started farting. And you all know that when a horse is not like eating and drinking properly, when they're passing gas, that is a really, really good sign. Um, when they're passing gas, you're like, yes, right? And then she came up and she let her horse lick it out of her hands because it is, you know, FDA approved for, um, it's a vitality one. And the horse immediately started just licking this oil out of her hands and relaxing and licking and chewing. And I said, you know what? I had another bottle of Digize. I said, you keep that bottle, like use it as much as you want. By the time I left the barn and I was done doing my supplements, I went out and the horse was drinking water. It was amazing. So this is one of my favorite, favorite oils for supporting digestion. Digize and peppermint. They're amazing. Um... And, uh, and so uh, these, if you're gonna um, use an oil for digestion, like if there's only one oil that you, you can use, this is the only one oil that this would be like the one in my horse kit that I would always have on me because we know how sensitive they are. Another thing, okay, so I'm gonna go off what I planned here for a second. Trailering, I forgot to talk about trailering. So horses, I just read an article that said horses can get motion sick too, right? And that makes sense, right? When we go, when we trailer them somewhere and they get out of the trailer, there's that poop soup smelly stuff right in the trailer like staring at us. And it's no wonder because they're like moving around. That's so unnatural. So dye dyes is something I use for like occasional motion sickness for myself. It's great before you ever trailer your horse. Give them digize. So these are ways you can give it internally. You can drop it in the lip. You'll be able to see at the end, I'll send you a link to all the oils, Brielle. Uh, you can drop it in the lip. You can mix it in a syringe with some carrier oil like olive oil and put it in there. You can add it to your horse's feed. 
and have them take it that way. Um, same with the peppermint. So before, the last time I trailered my horse, I was like running late, meeting the hauler, and I literally just opened up his lip and put the dye dries right into his bottom lip. So this is an awesome oil for trailering. Those, um, um, and okay, so let, let's segue into emotional oils, right? Because trailering, it can be kind of one of those experiences that creates a lot of stress for horses. Um, all of the recipes are gonna be in our education groups for the exact amount. Every horse is gonna be a little different on the exact amount. Um, so we have lavender, valor, frankincense. We have a ton of emotional oils here. Guess what, horses need them. We have them in a world that's not totally natural to them, and that's okay. It's just the truth. And um, these are four amazing oils for supporting your horse in stressful situations. So frankincense is really, really grounding. So not only is it good for skin, it's just super grounding. Lavender, I mean, everybody knows about lavender. People tell me all the time, I put lavender in my horse's nose. Hey, by the way, here's a quick tip. Try to put it somewhere else, like on the pole. I mean, on the forehead, on the pole, under the jaw, put it on your horse's chest, put it between your horse's legs to encourage them to drop and relax. Your horse doesn't need the oil like necessarily right in their nostrils. I wouldn't be happy if somebody put it right in my nostrils. Talk about sensory overload. So with, when you're using pure oils, a little goes a really long way and they're gonna go right into their cells and into their bloodstream wherever you put them, okay? so. These are my awesome, so Valor, Valor is, this oil actually went out of stock for a year, and the company, I think I think it was like $40 million they lost because they're so picky about sourcing their stuff and, and finding the right place that they didn't just wanna put something lesser on the market. And now it's back, thankfully, It's and it's awesome. It is like major confidence, that's all I can tell you. My horse, um, I moved him to a place with cows when he was two, and um, I moved him to a roping barn where they have like those ropings and the gate opens and um, they burst out and it's scary. And um, I knew he would be really scared. So the first night that he, was, he saw it like from way of a distance, like literally like over 100 feet, he was freaking out. So the next night I wanted to take him over to see it. And they were roping, but they also had cows like in the arena next to it from team sorting. They were just kind of like sitting there. Nobody was in there anymore. And the cows were just in there. So before I went, I dropped Valor down my horse's back. Ooh, there's another one, another stress oil. Stress away, gosh, I have five here. Um, that's awesome. So I dropped Valor down my horse's back and um, down his spine. So I didn't put it in his nose or anything and I let him pick his oil. So I offered him all of these oils where there's a great video in our education groups, you guys. So your horse can actually pick their oil. So I love Stress Away. I'm like, that's my oil. My horse loves Peace and Calming and he loves Valor. So everybody's gonna be different. And the nice thing is you have these options for you, your horse, your kids, whoever, your dog. Um, so anyways, I dropped it down my horse's spine. I took him out there and literally he was just standing there watching. It was incredible. I was able that day to take him into the other arena that was right next to the roping arena where the cows were loose in the arena. This is a horse that's never seen cows before and he was only two and I was able to lunge him with the cows loose in the arena with us. And that was like, and he picked Valor and I was like, you knew what you needed, you know? You knew exactly what you needed. So this is an, this is an oil. If you have an animal that's been through anything like a rescue, it's a great oil for that. Peace and calming and stress away. Usually a horse will like one more than the other. And the lavender and frankincense, I mean, they all, they're just great to always have. So if you're doing anything like going to a horse show, trailering, going on a, a, a scary trail, trailer, uh, trail ride that you're, you're a little worried about, right? Make yourself a stress roller. And I'll show you how to make one, okay? I'm, I'm gonna make one that I like for myself. So if you see this stress away, I actually just have a roller top right on it so I can just directly put it on myself. It smells like a tropical vacation in a bottle to me but I'm gonna make myself a stress roller and I'll show you how to do this. Um, 
Colette, that is a really common question. I really love Digice for supporting um, the digestive system and the stress on the digestive tract just to support that. Th that is my like go-to oil for anything digestive. So I, I would definitely, that would be one that I would look into for supporting your horse. Okay, so I'm gonna make this roller with Valor. So a little goes a long way. You don't need a lot of drops, you guys. I'll just do Val Valor, Lavender, So it's like courage, calm, and grounding with the frankincense. So that's kind of like, that's exactly what went through my head when I was picking which ones to use. And I could use peace and calming or stress away, but I use stress away a lot directly out of the bottle. And honestly, I don't have a dropper top on it. So um, I couldn't use it right now. And then um, I like fractionated coconut oil from my rollers because they it's very thin and it comes out really easily. So I just top it off with some fractionated coconut oil, stick the top on the bottle, and I have a stress roller for myself, right? To support my stress levels. So if you're gonna go through anything with your horse, you're gonna want to make sure you're calm and grounded too, right? And then for your horse, like those, like I said before, just dilute the oil. You can either do it pre-diluted or be lazy like me, where you just stick like I don't even know if you can see that it's dripping down my arm. I should have used a different color oil, like the almond oil. You just stick like a, a diluted amount of carrier oil in your hand and then the oil on it, or read the label. Some oils you can just put directly on your horse, like Valor, um, I use directly on my horse. Um, and great places are, you know, down the spine for the emotional ones, I like that. I like the pole, the brain stem, the forehead, under the chin, the chest, and between the legs are my favorites for those, okay, for that. Um, okay, so, and we talked about tummy, right? So what about breathing? So say your horse has, there's fires, or maybe your horse is under like a lot of breathing, respiratory stress, they're a dressage horse, they're a high performance horse of any kind, barrel racer, dressage, eventing, any kind of reining, cutting uh, performance horse, and they just need that extra respiratory support. Um, Raven, peppermint, so peppermint obviously has a ton of uses, right? And Panaway, are all great for respiratory support. So in the fires, I there's a video in our education group where I offered my horse whatever oil he wanted. I gave him like five choices. And Raven is like, in my opinion, like the superpower breathing support. But I wanted to offer him a lot of different oils so that he, cause he'll, he'll know what he needs. And he picked Raven and I was so tickled because it's like, it's it still gets me that these horses know what they need. And we use that for him in the fires. And this is a great one for performance horses as well that are under, that need that extra respiratory support. And you can just rub that on their chest. You can rub it under their jaw, you know, and wherever you think that they would need the respiratory support. Um, and I would dilute the Raven too. So just make sure you always read the bottle label, okay? So... Oh, I went totally out of order of what I planned. So we already did stress support. Um, also, those stress oils are great if they've lost a friend or rescue horses, horse shows. I think I forgot that. They're really good for um, situations of loss as well. Um, the There's a video um, in our education groups on how to let a horse pick. I'll kind of go over it right now just for you, though, Kelly, because I'm sure other people are wondering, too. So what I do is I will offer the oils one at a time. I'll take the bottle off, and I'm just going to pretend that this is my horse's nose, right? I'll hold the oil about here. If he comes to it and he sniffs it or tries to eat the bottle or is interested in it, I know he likes it. If he turns his nose away, I know it's not for him. I don't shove it in his nose. I let him, you know, you can, I can smell this oil that I just took the top off of from here. Um, and so can he. So 
really good reactions that I love to see is where they start licking and yawning, you know, chewing, just a total release. And you'll see that when they're, when they get the right oil, some horses are more stoic than others. My horse happens to be one of those stoic horses. Um, but you'll see that big release. Um, and that's when you know, but especially for emotional oils, but that's when you know the, the horse that they're the oil that they're picking. Okay, so those that's a great way to help them choose. And so in those situations, you know what they need and they're telling you. So who has a horse that um, that gets a lot of ouchies or accidents and like my guy, because he's super young right now, and he gets a lot of boo-boos basically. Um, here are the things that you can do. Does anyone have horses like that, that, you know, like maybe they're missing patches of hair or they get little boo-boos? You. Okay. Yes. I see yeses. Awesome. Okay. I will show you, by the way, you guys, my clay looked soupy before, but now it's like a really good consistency. So it just needed time to marinate there. Yes. You too. Okay. Good. Okay. So I will do. Oh, it, it just cut out for a second, but I'm back. Okay, so I'll show you um, some really good things. This sieves cleaner that I talked about before, I use it to clean any kind of boo-boo or icky thing on my horse. I'll just dilute it, one pouch, and a bottle of water, and a, and a bottle with water, with distilled water. It's awesome. Um, so that's my cleaning thing. And this is, I, I love this. Uh, there's an ointment called Animal Sense Ointment that I, that's pre-made and I love it. But I also like to make um, this, this, I guess it's like a charcoal thing. Um, if you guys have ever had a horse that is um, uh, kind of gets like a like fleshy around things and stuff, this is a really good thing for that. So I'm just going to take a little activated charcoal. If you guys have never used activated charcoal, look it up. It's great for your skin. It's great for you. It's great for your horse. So, and it's not expensive. So I'll take a little activated charcoal. My oils that I want for, to support my horse while they're, you know, dealing with these little ouchies and stuff that will help them. So I'm gonna go with frankincense. It's great for the skin, has a lot of great properties for that. And lavender, which, oh, it's down here on my desk. Okay, so. I will just do and the awesome thing is I can use this on my face too it's really good for any kind of like icky things on your face okay so I got my frankincense and my lavender in there and then I'm just gonna use olive oil in this one and of course I don't have a spoon, but. I'm gonna have to use that same sacrificed pen. So I'll just mix it until I get a really good consistency with the oil. And then if I need to wrap my horse or anything after, I'll wrap on top. This is a lot easier if you have a real spoon. Okay, now this is looking really good. See that? It looks like black, I don't know, guck, but my goodness, will it is does is it gonna support your horse's total wellness and, and them if especially if you have an accident prone boy like me, that is gonna be amazing. And really great for your skin. Um, if my horse was, uh, any kind of like, if my horse, had, if I have a sunburn or any kind of burn to myself to support my skin, lavender is my favorite for that. So I love lavender for that. Here's a real fun fact about lavender. Um, there's a hundred times more lavender exported from France than is actually grown there. So it's one of the oils. So when you smell our lavender, it smells like the lavender plant. When you smell most lavender, you, you're smelling synthetic fragrance. It's, it does not smell like real lavender. And um, so if you are trying to support your skin and 
say, you know, like I was, was out in the sun too long or whatever, or my horse was out in the sun too long, pure real lavender is great for that. But what's out on the market can actually cause things, a lot of the, the things on the market to be worse. So be really cautious of that. Make sure that you're using um, the real the real deal. Um, but lavender is awesome for that, for um, if you've been out in the sun too long. Um, okay, so we did out cheese. Hoof support. Okay, so whose horses, have you ever had to deal with any kind of hoof funk? Smelly hoof funk, gross hoof funk, any kind of hoof funk? Anybody? Awesome, Kelly, that's perfect. Um, okay, so hoof funk. You can make your own hoof oil, you guys. Guess what? Frankincense is amazing for your nails and your horse's nails, too, and their hooves. And you can make your own hoof oil by simply filling the can with a carrier oil with frankincense. And you can add frankincense and lavender. You can add, um, Colette will get to funky feet in just one second. But yes, there's some great things for funky feet. Um, you can do frankincense and lavender. Fra lemon is really good for that. So you can just do carrier oil with your oils. My favorite carrier oils, and I have a recipe again in the groups, is um, I like to use olive oil with castor oil. Castor oil has a lot of really good, it's a great carrier oil and it's great for your skin and your nails. So I really like that for my horse's um, hooves. And that will help Alana with total hoof wellness and supporting um, healthy hoofs basically. It will support, and your nails too, if you want really nice nails. Um, so you can make yourself one too. I just use it in, as an oil like on my hands and then it just supports my, my fingernails too. Um, so, and then for funky feet, I have a really good thing. So you, when you, when you, you know, your vet will tell you to like soak your feet for different funky things. So great thing is that Epsom salt. I like to add a packet of thieves into that. That's a really great hoof soak. Um, for a spray for that those smelly hooves, I will add a packet of thieves into a bottle like this because you don't need that much. And then I will do lemon and the citrus fresh with it. And then top it off with water. And I just spray those after I ride. It clean the feet out really good. I have to smell all the yuckiness. Spray those after you ride and you will notice a huge difference. It is really good for funky feet, okay? So that's an awesome, awesome spray for that. Um, and then also if your horse is dealing with some like stuff that needs to be soaked and you wanna wrap it, um, one of those poultices or that clay, the clay mix that I did or even the um, black charcoal mix that I did or, um, yeah, those two, both those things with the oils would be awesome for that. And I would do like a lemon and a thieves oil in there. Um, okay, so that's for hoof support. Total immune support. So, um, I skipped it. So internal support. I forgot to talk about internal support. So we talked about Digize a little bit, but I didn't talk about some of my favorites. So Digize I use internally for um, anything digestive, right? Just to support their guts. Um, lemon, so you know how, hi Maria, you know how uh, people are always saying like, uh, squeeze lemon into your water in the morning to detox your body, right? I tend to waste things and I like things super easy. So I love lemon oil. Lemon oil supports flushing, it's really good for supporting your kidneys, your liver. It's really, really good for just total flushing support. And I like to use this because we're exposed to so many things and our horses are exposed to so many things, right? That are totally unnatural to them. So this is one of the regular oils that I um, use to switch off with, with my horse. It, with my horse. Um, like I use it in a rotation. Um, and this is a really great flushing oil. It's really good for you too. So I put this in water every morning and it is a really just great thing to have to support yourself. Um, another oil. So if your horse is traveling or needs an immune system, something is going on, they're dealing with something, right? And they need their immune system to be supported as much as possible, right? Thieves. Thieves oil is, this is an oil that, um, Okay, I put this on the bottom of our feet 
every day, twice a day. And uh, we hardly ever, we never really get sick. And we, I haven't had a cold in I don't know how long. And about two weeks ago, <laughs> I'm like ashamed to admit this. About two weeks ago, my daughter, uh, I stopped doing it. Like uh, got busy, just haven't been doing it. It's been in the back of my mind. I ran out of the bottle. I have a bottle here. I just haven't done it. And I haven't, I just got out of the routine. And uh, three nights ago, so a couple nights ago, I said, okay, I'm getting it ready. I like got it ready. I put it outside my daughter's room so I'll remember to do it in her morning and bedtime routine. And that day she woke up <laughs> with a cold. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is karma getting me. It's like, whatever. I knew that I should have been doing it. I even prepared it the night before. And um, so now we're just using it uh, more than twice a day right now. And she's doing really good and using it for the whole family. So right now I actually have for myself this tea and it's honey with thieves and lemon in it for both for uh, lemon is also for flushing and immune support. So great for your horse, great for yourself too. Um, like amazing. And I'm doing this so that I don't catch whatever she has. And, um, so anyways, thieves is really good for immune support. Citrus fresh is really good for, um, supporting the immune system of your horse and supporting that flushing process. Um, and then the Ninja Red, we have this super antioxidant drink. It has like trace minerals in it, antioxidants, but the, but the, the major thing with this is that in this one little pouch, there's the same amount of antioxidants as a hundred oranges or 114 blueberries, 59 bro bro broccoli florets. So I don't know about you, I don't wanna eat 59 broccoli florets, but I want those antioxidants. Um, whenever my horse is uh, anywhere where he's under stress, or if he, cause he is accident prone, if he's done something to himself, or he's just not feeling right, which has happened a couple times, this is in his feed right away. And this is just great total immune support with the thieves, with the lemon. These are great ways to support your horse's immune system. They're great ways to support your own. So I take a packet of this every single day because I want to be like, I, I have a daughter and I'm not, I wasn't the youngest mom when I had her and I just want to stay feeling like energized and young for a really long time when I have my grandchildren I want to be riding horses when I'm like 85 when I see those people and they're 87 years old and they're still riding a horse I'm like that is going to be me so I do everything I can to support my immune system and to help my body feel good and this is in that daily daily uh, routine okay so We've gone over kind of all the great ways, easy ways to use your oils. Does anybody, um, if you are interested, does anybody want to know how they can save 60% on these oils? Like if you want to get them and you want to get all of these in a packet, how you can save 60%? Do I see any yeses? Okay, yes. Okay. Okay, so... If you want, if you're interested in, you know, taking control, I see lots of thumbs ups. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you're interested in taking control of your horse's, you know, wellness and your own and feeling better and having the power to really support yourself, your family, your animals, the awesome thing is these 12 oils and the packets of Ninja Red and this packet, everything comes in a kit together. And that kit is priced at 60% off of retail value. So this is over a $400 value if you were to go buy these things um, separately. And it's priced at what you would, less than what you would pay if you were to go buy your oils at like junk oils at the store that have been diluted with stuff. It's priced at, for everything that we just talked about, it's only $165, you guys. So over $400 worth of oils, only $165. So. If you want to grab your oils, what you get with that, so you get 20, and if you do get the kit, you'll get 24% off your oils for life. Um, as an active member, you're gonna get, so your future orders, you're always gonna save money on. This, uh, this offer is going on right now, so you're good. So if you wanna take advantage of it, you're good. Um, 
you're gonna get 24% off. You're gonna get all of the education. So we have specific, there's different groups for different teams. We are really equine focused team and families. So we have specific education groups for families for pets and for horses, where you will find tons of recipes and testimonials. And those are exclusive to our team. They're a gift from us. We don't wanna charge people for that because we wanna help you feel better, right? That's why I'm doing this. I'm not charging anyone for this workshop. I got so many emails. How much is it for this workshop? And it, I always say free, like this is free. And as a member of our team, you're gonna get all of your oil, all your education in our wellness groups for free and um, in our education groups for free. Um, and then if you want, there's also obviously like if you wanna help other people and share with other people, you can also do that. And a lot of people do it so that they can help pay for their horse's board. Some people do it so that they can do more than that. They wanna pay for their horse's board. They wanna quit a full-time job. They're, that's like how I am. I, I, I'm able to now stay home with my family full-time and do this and it's amazing. And I get to help people all the time and it's just wonderful. But. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just use the oils and it's and it's totally fine. So in order to get started, if you guys, for the first five people that get started tonight, what I'm doing is I'm doing a wellness, total wellness consultation. So we'll do a three month wellness plan for your horse and for yourself. So for the first five people that wanna get started tonight, you'll get a total wellness, um, three month wellness plan for yourself and your horse. Just go to uh, thehorseaholic.com forward slash oils and you can get started there. There's all the instructions um, to get started there. And um, yes, and if I see somebody in Canada is here, there's a different kit. There's a slightly different kit for Canada. It's very similar, um, but you can still go to that thehorseaholic.com forward slash oils and we'll take you to how to get started for Canada. Um, and then as a gift to everybody on here tonight, um, regardless like of where you're coming from, I wanna help you. And I want to give you a gift of our ebook. And our ebook includes a lot of recipes. Some of them are recipes you may have seen tonight. A lot of the recipes we saw, you saw tonight, though, are just for our, uh, they're, they're in our group, our education groups. Um, but if you want to get that ebook, just go to thehorseaholic.com forward slash ebook. So I am going to, um, I'm going to, end this now and I want to say thank you for all of your guys's comments and your support and um, if you want to get started tonight I'm excited go to thehorseaholic.com forward slash oils and I will talk to you soon